The British have always had an interest in Egypt. Before invading Egypt in 1882, the British would cooperate with corrupt Ottoman governors of Egypt such as Muhammad Ali Pasha in order to exploit Egypt's resources and gain economic hegemony over Egypt. During the cotton boom of 1861 to 1865, Egypt became one of the main suppliers of cotton to Lancashire textile mills that were so crucial to the development of the British industry. As more and more European cash was pumped into Egypt, the Ottoman governors of Egypt began to spend lavishly on personal and public endeavours and took out loans from European financiers in order to do so. Perhaps the most grand project was the building of the Suez Canal by French contractors. By allowing ships to travel between the Mediterranean and the Indian Ocean without circulating Africa, the canal reduced the distance to British India by about 7,000 kilometers. Prior to the construction of the Suez Canal, Great Britain had little interest in Egypt regarding it essentially as one more province of the Ottoman Empire. Control of the canal allowed Britain unhindered exercise of its sea power, which was vital to maintaining its economic, political and military positions abroad. But it also meant that Britain's policies toward both Egypt and Sudan would for the next three quarters of a century be determined by the need to protect the Suez Canal and the lifelines to the eastern marches of the empire which passed through it. But when the loans that financed all of this spending finally became due, the Egyptian state was unable to repay them. Therefore, the United Kingdom stepped in and repaid his loans in return for controlling shares of the canal. Discontent with creeping British colonialism and the crumbling Ottoman rule eventually led to the Arabi revolt which began as a military rebellion but soon gained popular support. The revolt was led by Colonel Ahmad Arabi who with the help of his compatriots in the army deposed the Ottoman governor of Egypt and worked to restructure Egyptian debt repayments and threatened the Suez Canal. After the Sudanese rebellion broke out against the British in 1881, anti-British feelings amongst Egyptians also began to increase. The war crimes and massacres committed by the Anglo-Egyptian army caused many Egyptians to turn against the British. At this point, the rulers of Egypt were so close to the British that they even appointed the British Charles George Gordon as the governor of Sudan. As a result of such policies and the mistreatment of the Sudanese by the Anglo-Egyptian army, many Egyptians who were stationed in Sudan defected to the Sudanese side and rebelled against the British. For example, in the year 1896, the famous Egyptian poet Hafiz Ibrahim was deployed to Sudan as a part of the Anglo-Egyptian army's Sudan campaign. There, Hafiz and several of his colleagues were involved in a rebellion against the mistreatment of the Sudanese. Whereupon, Hafiz was court-martialed and sent back to Egypt. After returning to Egypt, Hafiz rose to fame and his anti-British poems became famous throughout Egypt and Sudan. During the Sudanese revolt, the famous Azhar scholar Muhammad Abdu openly supported the revolt and prayed that the revolt would spread to Egypt. In Egypt, another rebellion against the British soon erupted in 1919. By the end of the First World War, nearly every segment of Egyptian society had reason to resent British rule and be receptive to renewed nationalist agitation. The Muslim majority in Egypt resented the defeat of the Ottoman Empire that resulted in British domination over the Muslim world, and large landowners 
were irritated by the British authorities' curtailing of cotton production for the sake of cereals and foodstuff during the war, a policy that meant smaller profits for the landowners and food production for the British war effort. Moreover, besides alienated large landowners, educated Egyptian administrators and professionals were also annoyed by their lack of job opportunities and promotions. Since the British authorities appeared to prefer younger, more inexperienced, less able and unsuitably behaved British officials. On September 1918, opposition leaders Saad Zaghloul, Abdel Fahmi, Ali Sharawi and others from the People's Party brought demands for independence to the local authority. All of these demands were refused by the British and Zaghloul was imprisoned and exiled to Malta. This led to huge protests throughout Egypt. On March 10th, a riot had broken out in Cairo. Trams were wrecked, windows were smashed in the European quarters, violence and looting took place. Unrest also broke out in rural areas where Egyptian peasants and farmers rioted. In order to retain their food supplies during the food shortage, the peasants attacked the rail lines to prevent the transport of agricultural commodities to the cities. The British violently cracked down on the protests by killing hundreds of protesters. However, this only made the situation worse. Now British officers were being killed across Egypt. To put an end to the situation, newly appointed High Commissioner Sir Edmund Allenby released Zaghloul and his associates on 25th March 1919. The British authorities were forced to consider the ramifications of continuing ownership of Egypt and the possibility of allowing greater autonomy to Egypt. Zaghloul and the Wafd party were able to unite much of Egypt's population against the British. Political action was no longer confined to a small group of wealthy upper-class men from Cairo. On 28th February 1922, Britain issued a declaration announcing the end of the protectorate and the beginning of the independence of Egypt. However, after 1922, Egypt was faced with new challenges. King Farouk signed the Anglo-Egyptian Treaty requiring Britain to withdraw all troops from Egypt except the Suez Canal Zone. Therefore, British influence was still strong in Egypt. Egypt was plagued by corruption and its subjects saw it as a puppet state of the British. This period gave birth to movements who wanted to kick the British out completely and end corruption. Groups such as the Muslim Brotherhood and the Egyptian Communist Party rose to popularity during this period. Even after Egypt gained independence, there were still problems that needed to be addressed. Much of these problems were problems that the British had left behind. For example, leaders such as the socialist Jamal Abdel Nasser wanted to nationalize the Suez Canal. On the other hand, Hassan al-Banna also wanted to nationalize the canal but did not want Egypt to become a Soviet puppet state. Furthermore, he also wanted to address the moral degradation of Egyptian society that was inherited from the British. Such ideological battles continued throughout the 20th century and into the 21st century. Even strong disagreements within groups such as the Muslim Brotherhood took place, such as the disagreement between Sayyid Qutb and Hassan al-Hudaybi about the use of violence. Since independence in 1922, the history of Egypt has been filled with military coups and ideological disagreements. 
Egypt has always been a place of diverse ideas and much of these ideas have influenced much of the Arab world. After other Arab countries gained independence from British, French and Italians, they often looked to Egyptian intellectuals, scholars and leaders for revolutionary ideas.